All right. Hello there. Uh, this video is basically going to be all about how to forward your uh, DAISY server so other people outside your network can basically access it. Maybe you're making mods or and want to test them on your server or maybe you want to play with your friends and you want to host the server locally on your network so that they can connect from the external one with your IP and stuff like that. So I'm not going to beat around bush and I'm going to drop this instantly. So this is basically the holy grail of how to do this. Uh, if you know what all this means, basically just stop this video and you can use all these ports to set them up and then that's pretty much it. Because these like these ports are the only ones that you're gonna need. Well, not all of them, but surely most of them. Because DZSA, if you're using DZSA, obviously for DZSA and stuff like that. So for those who don't really know how to set up these ports and everything, uh, I'll be just showing you what I have set up and show that everything's working for me at least. Uh, and that's pretty much it. So. What you're gonna do is you're gonna have to take these all ports, the ones that I have here, and you're gonna have to open your firewall. First thing first, firewall, and go to the inbound rules here. Uh, once you're here, you're gonna have to click on new rule, and it's gonna basically go and ask you to select what type of rule would you like to create. So you're going to choose port. And note that this is going to be very rep repetitive right now. So, okay, first thing we do is port. We're always going to do port. We're going to choose TCP at first, and we're going to specify the ports. So the ports that we're going to specify is the ones that we're going to be using. So if you're not using DZSA, well, you're using DZSA, but you want like an extra web page of status of your server or something like that. I'm not really sure, but I think that's what this DZSA port does. Usually it's not needed. You should just ignore this. Your game will still work on DZSA. Uh, things that you, the ports that you're going to definitely need is the game port, Steam Curie, and the Steam port. So this range, this port, and this port. So what you're going to do is you're going to take these ports, you're going to paste this in, add a comma, space, write this port down, and then 8766 also, this one here. So you're going to have all of this range, this port, and this port in here on TCP. You're going to go next. You're going to do allow the connection, make sure it's on allow the connection. Everything check, name. Daisy, whatever, whatever, and then click on finish. And you're going to create one. Now what you're going to do is you're going to create a new rule again. You're going to go to port again. Next, you're going to choose this time UDP. Input the exact same ports. This range, comma, space, this, comma, space, this. I'm going to do the exact same here. Uh, it's not letting me, but basically the same stuff here. You're going to go to outbound rules. Once you have those two set up, you're going to do exactly the same thing here as you did in the inbound rules. I'm going to choose port, this, TCP or UDP. You're going to enter here. I'm going to provide only this, but you should provide this and this too after the comma, obviously. So for TCP, on the outbound, it's going to block the connection be gonna be set like on default so you make sure to check allow the connection make sure it's allowed connection i'm gonna go next 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 give it a name blah 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 and it's done i'm gonna do the same for udp2 in this one same thing here on udp ports allow the connection and so on so in the end you're gonna have something like this so you're gonna have like uh daisy server tcp and daisy server udp where all of these 2302 2305 27016 8766 ports are all allowed both tcp and udp i'm going to do same for outbound rules which is the same thing here same ports 
exact same way. Once you have this done, that's it. Your firewall rules are set up. Now what we're going to do is we are going to go to a web, a web browser. You know, open a new tab and we're going to type in the address bar your local IP address of the device that is going to be running the server basically. And if you do not know how to find it, you can just Google it, how to find my local IP address and something like that. And the vid videos or tutorials are going to show you perfectly how to do that. So mine is 192.168.01. Yours should be something similar. Sometimes it can look like this. Usually it's this, at least for me. Once you do here, you're going to be linked into a login page. So in the login page, you're going to have to find your router login details. So these are not the, this is not the password that you use to log into your router to get the Wi-Fi access. This is the router to, for the admin, usually. So usually the, I think they're written on the router itself. I'm not sure. Maybe they can be changed by your ISP, internet service provider or some shit, but Basically, you're just going to log in, find those credentials. Because if you don't, you cannot proceed. You cannot have a DAISY server. That's it. Uh, once you log in, you're going to be probably in a very, very different place. Options are going to be different. Pretty much everything's going to be different. So the first thing to do is to find tabs. So these are the tabs could be anywhere on top for you on left on right side doesn't really matter as long as you find like categories or tabs somewhere it means you're in the right place so first thing you have to look for is either something called firewall virtual servers or anything remotely similar to those terms uh, if you click on those tabs you're gonna see something similar to like names interfaces protocols IPs, ports, and stuff like that. So if you're gonna find that, that means you're in the right place. If you click on add in that page, and you see all of this kind of stuff, like names, templates, well, templates, not maybe, protocols, definitely, loop, not loopback, maybe, private IPs, remote IPs, ports for both of them, this is the right place. That means you're here, you have to do stuff here. Um, so the first thing you do is you basically do the exact same stuff as in the firewall rules. It's just that it's a bit different. You're configuring the router's firewall, basically. Well, yeah, kind of. Uh, so you give it a name. I do suggest giving the same names as in the firewall. Just you see how I name them. It's like Daisy Server TCP, Daisy Server UDP. So just name it Daisy Server, maybe, or something like that. Daisy Server... Uh, 2302-2305 or something like that maybe because for each port for each different port we're going to have to define a different rule so these are like one port category so we're going to give it a name we're going to enter our private IP so basically this IP but like instead of one because one identifies the router usually sometimes it can be the 255 I think or 254 something like that but usually it's one first one's the router and this one's going to be not the first this one's going to be your actual machine's address on local so again you have to google that how to find your local IP address and once you do you enter that local IP address in my case it's this one and then you open the exact same ports so for some routers uh, some routers you're going to have an option to provide start and port for some routers you won't so if you cannot provide ranges that means you will have to define rules for each of these ports so that means you'll have to define a separate rule for 2302 2303 2304 and 2305 separately in my case i can just do it with one rule because i have ranges of uh, ports so you can just do this basically interface that doesn't really matter to don't, don't do that all uh, for protocol we do that as the same as in the firewall for computer so basically TCP and UDP and if you have NAT loopback enable that that's helpful 
that's very helpful. For remote IP, we're going to leave this empty. If you have that kind of an option, something similar to it, and we're going to provide the exact, exact same ports here. They have to be exactly. It says that it's already being used because I already have those set up, but basically it should be all okay for you if you don't have this occupied. Uh, so you're going to create this rule. Basically, pri on private, your IP has to be your machine's ID IP, and then the ports to open, and then on local, nothing provided. We allow all IPs, and we provide them. All, we allow them to go through only 2302 to 2305 on outside. That's it for this one. Another one. You're going to create a second rule. You're going to name it as the server 27016. I like to do it like this. We're going to do TCP and UDP. Enable NAT loopback. Basically the exact same stuff here too. And you're going to do the port 27016, 27016 here. That's it. Exact same ports. You're going to save that. You're going to have two. And then you're going to do the exact same thing for 8766. So daisy server 8766. And you're going to do your IP. And you're going to do your private port and the public port. That little bit enabled, obviously, TCP UDP, don't forget that. That's important. So all these settings, you save it, and that's it. That's pretty much all of it. Now, once you're going to start the server, um, it should be visible on the DZSA launcher, definitely, if you check it with this one. So there's a DZ launcher.com link you go to here you go to check your server and you enter your public IP address so your public IP address you can just go into the browser tab type my IP and the first website popping out will most likely show you your IP address the public IP uh, once you know your public IP you paste my public IP here right you paste your IP in here then you add this colon and then you provide the port, so it's usually T7016. So you provide this port, the one that you open, only this one. And what to do to check server is supposed to be green. Only if your server is running, and only if you started your server it should be visible. Once you do this, when you check the server, you wait like a minute. <coughs> you open your DZSA launcher and you're gonna see your server up. Uh, for the vanilla launcher, vanilla launcher, I think Thing, everything should be okay besides some configurations but yeah everything else probably is okay not sure if I have skipped anything particular yeah actually your daisy configuration so it's the start bad basically or whatever however you run your server so you usually have some sort of a start file which runs the daisy server x64 exe so make sure there is no any ports specified in here or anything you know like game port or whatever make sure the ports are not specified here because if they are you will have to change them accordingly in your router and in your firewall too and that's pretty much it that's how you port forward your daisy server and thank you for watching see ya